Hey guys, this is Derek Weingarten with Weingarten Racing for another video. Sorry I had to move. No one else seems in the house seems to want to help with this video stuff. But anyway, today's video is actually over um, the differences in flow winches as far as the numbers go. And I have two, and I'll talk about why I have two. This one's a Sanyaz Digital 680, and this one's a Superflow 750. I both bought, both of them I bought brand new. So I, wasn't, I got them used from someone, and both of them were bought brand new. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about it. When I first got started, I didn't think I would get this big. So the idea of dropping at that time, you know, something like $10,000 for it. The only one that was available at the time was the Superflow 600. Uh, that was even in the price range. They had a 1020, but we got that was out of it, for sure out of it. So at the time I was looking on the internet um, and Performance Trends had this Easy Flow Flow Bench and they had given me a deal on it and I had bought the stuff to make it. And an Easy Flow Flow Bench is something you make on your own. It comes with the, the sensors that measure the pressure, the orifice plate and some stuff to make it work. And really all it is is a, a gigantic, um, I wish I had pictures, I, I don't. But all it is is a gigantic like eight or six inch, I think it's eight, PVC um, pipe that comes off the cylinder head. So instead of here, it come down a little bend. And instead of having the vacuum motors in here, you made your own plenum box. And at the time when I first built it, I was yesterday using shop vacs, like craftsman shop vacs. I'm not even making this up. Because the only person I was really doing it for maybe one or two other people. Uh, but for the most part, it was mostly my stuff. Just research, I didn't really care. Anyway, it still pulled 28 inches of vacuum, but there was a huge problem with using all the vacuums there is that they would, if you turn on the vacuums, the stronger vacuum would pull the vacuum away from the other vacuum instead of trying to pull it from the head. So it was really hard getting it to go 28 inches. I ended up getting more and more vacuum until it got plum ridiculous. So at that point, the only thing I really changed is I ended up um, getting ready with all the shop backs and I built this wood box and I found online where you could buy vacuum motors and they were running on 120 volts because I was like, I didn't want to mess with 220. And I built this box and I put 11 of them in there. And each one pulled 100 CFM. So if you do the, ma the math, that's 1100 CFMs total. But it also drew 110 amps. Because each, each one pulled 10 amps, which is stupid. Uh, I don't know if I'd recommend doing it. Anyway, first time I fired it up, I was like, I'm gonna see how much pressure this thing actually pulls. When I got the 40, the box that the motors were in imploded. It busted all the screws and stuff that was holding it together. At that point, I realized I'm going to have to do something different, and I built an even bigger box, more supports behind it, or stronger box, I should say. And that was the flow bench I used forever, and it worked great. So the, it really did. Um, I had individual switches, so I'd turn on the flow benches um, one at a time. By the way, if you're still watching this, you're like, when are we ever get the flow numbers? They'll be at the end, so if you just want to skip to the end, you can get to that then. But anyway, back to it. I had individual switches so I could turn on each flow bench motor at itself and it had a check valve so if the other ones weren't on, they wouldn't suck in vacuum from them. And even though I had 11 vacuum motors, I think the most I ever turned on at one time were like six, so you'd just pull them in. And I had bleed off valves. So to control the pressure instead of like this, there were a bunch of little valves I would open or close. So I would I'd have three and I'd have one open all the time. And then the other two I would close. And once I was about to close a third, I'd flick on another motor. So anyway, it worked great. Um, it, was, it was super nice and I had a calibrated orifice plate, which I'll kind of show in a second. And it, it read great. The only problem is, is um, and I use it for a lot of stuff, it, pulled, it could pull a ridiculous amount of vacuum, like I said. But, um, the only problem I really had with it was, and I hate to break your heart if you've got a homemade flow bench. Customers will never take you seriously if they see a homemade flow bench, no matter how glamorous you make it look. And I know you're like, I'm gonna hear, I can already see the comments below. This is not me saying this. This is what customers will not say to you, but are thinking it. It just happens, straight, straight out. And I, it doesn't mean I don't think my homemade bench was any better or worse than this. Matter of fact, I think it was better. I'm telling you, straight up, that's just people's impressions. It's just what they believe. So anyway, it was working great. And one of the um, local headquarters here, which is really a good headquarter, he um, was using my flow bench for the longest time, and then he's like, I'm gonna go ahead and buy one. Well, he bought a Superflow 750. And so I was like, man, I, I need to be, you know, maybe I should step up to a professional one. The business is good enough, I should get one. And I actually called Superflow, and I was gonna buy their uh, 600, because they still sold it at that time too. And they were just dicks. I don't know how to describe it, they were dicks. 
So I was like, I'm not dealing with these guys. It's like, I really wanted to buy, but they just didn't even want, like they didn't have time for me. So I had enough. So I looked online and I had never heard of these guys before and called Jameson Equipment. And I think they're in Indiana and they had one and I bought it. And this one, actually they said it pulls more vacuum than the Superflow 600, even than the 750. And I didn't believe it because you look 680. 680 CFM, this is 750 CFM. You would think that this one has more capacity. I mean, tell you it doesn't. So I bought this one and um, it has nine motors in it, but it runs on 220. Anyway, it um, was working for about a month and I've never had it on my homemade bench, never did this. And then after a first month, it burned up a flow bench motor. And I've never had that before. The whole shop was filled with smoke, bad. So I called Jameson up and this is how good they are. So before you think this bench is bad, this is how good they are. And by the way, this is like 2011-ish, maybe 10. I called them up and this was like on a Friday. I said, man, I've burned up the motor. I, I think something else might be wrong. They drove down that day, dropped what they're doing, drove down and Stuart, which is uh, John's son, he drove down, it's like a 12 hours drive. This is customer service. A lot of other companies that I buy equipment from won't, I spent forty thousand dollars on my mill over here. I broke one part two years after I got it. Uh, major piece of equipment. They could care too less. I couldn't get even get them on the phone. But these guys, this is how good their customer service is. He drove twelve hours with the two motors, changing them out that night, and be bopped home. Uh, phenomenal. So I was like, sold. I don't care if it whatever it does, I'm gonna do it. Well, six months later, burned up another one. And about once every six months, it would burn them up. I didn't call him each time because he showed me how to change it. And it was no sense. I felt bad for making him drive 12 hours. If I'd known it was that easy, I just would have done it myself. But he kept giving me motors and spent a diamond in my pocket. Uh, but anyway, uh, it kept eating motors. So finally, I was getting frustrated at this point. And it wasn't uh, Jameson at the time I called them up and I was like, hey man, I'm getting, this is old. It keeps burning up motors. So I don't know what's going on. He said, well, the thing is, um, you have an older model. All the newer models that you order, every single one have this. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a uh, motor controller. And what I mean by that is, whenever the flow bench turns on, before, when I turned it on, all nine motors were working full blast, 100%. So you had to use this dampener at the back here to kind of take it easier on the motors. But the problem is they're always wide open. There's no need for it. You'd be flowing like this head that flows 230 CFM. Uh, all nine were giving it hell. So what he's like, none of our new ones have it. We have this motor controller and what it does is when you turn it on, it spools it up. So instead of having all wide open, it has some kind of electrical device that gradually spools the motors up to match the demand. And it always gets to right to 20 inches. He said, you send in your bench and we'll put that on yours and we'll just charge you for, the, for this. Uh, and I was like, okay, fine. But I wasn't for sure if it was gonna work. And so I sent it up to them. And in the meantime, I called Superflow up. And at this time, what happened with Superflow is they had um, bought out DTS, uh, which is a dyno company. And one of the guys that was there, I think his name is Dan, he had been the dyno guy at the Engine Master Challenge. Well, he answered the phone. Now, Dan's a super cool guy. That was not at all the guy I talked to probably eight, seven, six years ago before that or whatever. And he's like, yeah, I could sell you one, no problem. And he was super cool, great to deal with. So I ordered 750 thinking, I'm gonna have this one before this one, because it can't be without a flow bench. Anyway, um, Jameson gets this bench shipped to him. They, fit, they get this thing put on and shipped out within the week. So I literally, this wasn't out two weeks. A month later, this showed up. So I was like, wow, well, let's see. Oh, I need to back up. When I first got this too, if I was really expecting like the flow bench numbers were really gonna change from my whole main flow bench. No, it was like a three CFM difference. Now beginning when I first built the flow bench, it was a little off because I hadn't figured out the whole calibration thing. But in the end, for like the longest time, once I got it, the calibration was almost, I mean like a three CFM difference, that's it. So it's been anyway, had a commercial bench, but now I have this one. So that's the reason why I have two. Now I'll go ahead and this is probably, like I said, more information what you ever want to know. If you're just wanting to know the flow bench numbers, really just wait till the end. But I'm trying to give you more information in case you choose to buy. I have both and I'll continue to keep having both. So anyway, having both, I was wondering what the differences really were. So I'll go through some of them. 
This actually has less motors. I, I know it doesn't have nine, I think it has seven. Uh, it pulls less amps. It also has a motor controller, just like this one now does. And by the way, every one, like I said, of the Sanyas you order now, it will have a motor controller. And I haven't burned up one motor from this, and it's been uh, six years now, something like that, I can't remember. My math might be off, but it's been a while and I've never burned up motors since having it on. This one has motor controller on there too, the Superflow. The catch is, this one spools so much quicker than this. I don't know if it's because it's got more flow bench motors, but whatever. This one gradually comes up. That's why you never see me hardly film on this because I would run out of tape. Like the memory of the phone would be over with because it takes too long to spool up on this thing. Um, I still use it, but it takes forever. Anyway, when I, just to give you an idea on the flow bench numbers though, let me just show you something I want real quick. These are calibration orifice plates. So I got this one from PTS. Anyway, so this is a 400 CFM plate, and this is a uh, uh, 300 CFM plate. I've got more, but just grab these real quick. When I got this, this one, it has its own calibrated orifice plate that came with it. And what it does is, you're supposed to take all this garbage off. This is the stuff that holds the head down so you can flow it. You bolt, they have a plate that you bolt on here and so does Superflow. And what you do is if you're trying to check to make sure your bench is in calibration, you put it back on there, it should read the same as what it was when you got it. And every now and then I do check them. But then these plates are bought separately. These are to measure an exact amount of airflow. And the reason why I bought them is because I want to make sure that the bench was reading accurately. So anyway, what I did for just for fun, not really for fun, just to check, I put this, this 300 CFM plate, I put it on the Sanyas, and then I went over to the Superflow as soon as I got it before I even mounted the head on. And so this 300 CFM plate on the Sanyas read 300.2, and um, 300.4, so pretty close. So I did it twice just to back it up. Anyway, went over and did it on the Superflow and same inches of vacuum, 28 inches of vacuum. By the way, it comes standard, it's 28, 25. So I had to change it to 28. It read 287. So to give you an idea what it means is, this bench read exactly what the plate should flow. This one read 13 CFM less. So I was like, that makes no sense. I wasn't going to touch the calibration from the factory. No way did I spend, no way this is expensive. Super Bowl was like 12 grand. So there was no way I would spend 12 grand on this thing and change its calibrations right off. It is whatever, what it is, what it is. So I figured that the heads are actually going to flow less on this. Incorrect. So the first head I floated on here. Then I, all I did was take it off, put it on there, and it flowed higher. And pretty much that's how it's been. Every head almost either flows the same or higher on this. The exhaust side's a little bit lower than on the Sanyas, but the intake side's almost always higher. So, just something to think about. Now, let's deal with this. This one says it flows 680 CFM, but that's at 20 inches of vacuum. This is 750, it's supposed to flow 750 at 25 inches of vacuum. What that means is it's gonna flow less than 750 at 28 inches. To give you an idea, I, when I had all this stuff off, I put a plate over this to cover up the opening to see how much total, how much real air would flow at 28 inches. So I kept opening or closing the hole to where I could get the, the thing to read exactly 20 inches and the max amount of flow would go. This one, even though it says 680 at 28 inches, this one went 712.7 CFM at 20 inches of vacuum. Yeah, it's a lot. You ever had, uh, chances are I'm never going to max this bench out. Nothing ever has come close. The highest thing I've had on here that's flowed is like 567. There's some big block heads. Now, on the super flow though, the most I've been doing the same method. This is going to shock you. The most ever at 28 inches of vacuum, so locking it off, the most I got at max capacity was 540 CFM at 28 inches. So doing the same thing. 712. 540. That's the reason why I use this so much and this not as much. Now, I guarantee my flow number just like NBE. So usually if they don't flow within 8 CFM and I give them these numbers and also by the way on my ported heads I also usually give them numbers for this bench too. But I guarantee this one. So if they're not within 8 CFM you get 100 bucks. 
Does it happen? Three times. And I can even begin to tell you the number of heads I've sold. So, quite a bit. And I have no idea why the other ones float less. One of them was I could almost nail it because they didn't use the same ballast that I did, so I ported them bare. Mistake, which, not really a mistake, but he didn't use the same valves I did to flow, so of course it was off. Um, but anyway, I have no idea why the other ones read different and never make any sense. But these kind of validate each other, in other words. So I kind of get to see. So hopefully that gives you some kind of insight into the two benches. This one actually looks prettier and it does have a light. It also costs like two grand more than that one. This one's more capacity. So, but anyway, I use them both. But most of your, almost all the videos are used on this, almost all. Now, you've stuck around for a long time, so you'd really like to see the flow numbers. So on that KMJ Assault head, I'm showing the difference between the two flow benches and just that head. All I did is just like this. I took this head off and the whole bore sleeve and everything and put it on here and float it. I didn't change anything else. So the only difference is just the bench. Let's look at the numbers. Here are the numbers. So this is the Sanyas, and you look at the best numbers at 299. Same bore everything. And the best number at the on the Superflow, same point of lift, 309. So yeah, the Superflow reads higher. Now on the exhaust though, it's different. So it went 232 to a 222. So almost 10 CFM less on the exhaust. But on some points it does match, or sometimes it's a little bit higher. But on the intake, for the most part, it's always higher. It just is. Rarely are their heads the same. Sometimes they are, but usually it reads higher on the Superflow. Anyway, this is probably more information you want to. Thanks for sticking around. Longer video. Um, thanks again. You guys, oh, that's my card. So in case people keep asking. Anyway, thanks again for watching. You know, if you're ever hungry and you're wanting some good food and you're in Tulsa, go to Burn Co. Their barbecue is outstanding. All right, you guys take care.